Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, let me get my stuff up and running here with you. Great to be speaking to everybody uh, today. When, when the world is a level playing field, it will be much better. When it is open, it will be better. And when we work together, it will get better. These fundamental principles have changed software forever. We have the open source movement within software that started 20, 30, 40 years ago, even longer, but for real, maybe 20 years ago, and which has improved and changed software <clears throat> forever, for the better. We have a similar shift going on in security where we're bringing this level playing field thinking, transparency, and collaboration into security. And the best is when you do both of those together. So I'm delighted to be here today to speak to you about this topic uh, at the Bitwarden Open Source Security Summit. So what I just said was essentially that in software, when you make the source code open, you unleash collaboration and innovation, otherwise not possible. You do things that you cannot do with software that's closed. Similarly, in cybersecurity, in information security, when you make vulnerabilities and their fixes open, meaning when you make the problems and the solutions open, you unleash collaboration and risk reduction, otherwise not possible. So a superior way of doing security, and one, the only one that really works, is one where you, you do it together. There's a bunch of, of companies, organizations, projects driving this. What I'm showing on this slide is just a subset, maybe the tip of the iceberg or something. But we have very strong organizations who have seen, who see the value of openness, collaboration, and building a level playing field for everybody, producing open source tools that are useful for security, driving security initiatives, helping you develop more secure software, helping you secure the software to, that you've built, and so on. I'm the CEO of HackerOne. We represent the world's largest community of friendly hackers, of security researchers who will come to your help look for vulnerabilities in your software and tell you about them so that you can fix them long before any criminal elements can get to it and, and cause uh, damage and, and havoc for your system and your business. So that's what HackerOne is all about. We, we are uh, the platform for all the good hackers in the world. And we by now have around 900,000 people signed up to be ethical hackers on our platform. That's more good guys than there are bad guys in that practice. That's more white hats than there are black hats in the entire world. An example of how you practice transparency in the security world is what I'm showing here, the Hacktivity feed. So you can go to hackerone.com slash Hacktivity, and you will see that organizations are running bug bounty programs <clears throat> excuse me, or vulnerability disclosure programs are publishing the contents of the vulnerability reports and the communication for the whole world to learn from. This is the best way to share knowledge and build a pool defense that can fight against cybercrime. Because the fact that you've fixed the vulnerability doesn't mean that, that's, that all work is done. If you share the knowledge with others, you will multiply the positive effects others can learn and, and preemptively and, and, and as a preventative measure, fix the same things. And there are so many vulnerabilities in the world so that even when we fix them faster and faster and, and more in a more automated way, there are still millions and probably 100 million vulnerabilities to fix out there in the wild. Looking more broadly at cybersecurity or information security, as it is also called, uh, for many people, it's a new practice and it's difficult to understand how to approach it. We believe that the best, the most rational way to look at this is that it's probabilistic risk management. There's nothing such as fully secure. There's nothing such as fully exposed. Everything is shades of gray. Everything can break. Everything can be protected. And what you try to do is lower the risk of a breach. And, there, and you do that by increasing the cost for the adversary to attack you. And when it's very expensive to break into your system, they will try on some other system and you will be safer. 
So it's about reducing the odds of a cyber breach and but not believing that you can reduce them to 0%. That's not possible. There's always a risk involved, but every step you can reduce it is good for you, good for your business. Information security is led often by a chief information security officer. And a little bit jokingly, we could ask, what does the C there stand for? In the old world, it often meant commanding. And in the new world, it often means collaborative. And let me show what, I'm, what I mean here. There's an, there was a world of cybersecurity where uh, the principle was to keep it closed, keep it close to your vest, confidential and exclusive. Share the knowledge, share the findings with the smallest possible group of people so as not to be shamed or not to be blamed for any wrongdoings. In the modern world, where we bring openness to security, like we bring bringing openness to software development, uh, the principle is to be open, transparent, and inclusive, to share the bad news and the good news, because only when you shine a light on the bad news can you really fix it. So in, in the, the old world, there was a belief that you can reach impenetrability and complete compliance, that you somehow can reach a state where the perimeter is fully defended and there's no risk at all. In today's world, we believe in a reduction of cyber risk. It can never go to zero, but it can always go down. Uh, in the old world, only certified experts were allowed to engage in security. Today, uh, companies realize that it's something they must train every single employee on. Whether they are dealing with software development and deployment or not, everybody must have a sense for it because we have cyber threats coming to us through all digital channels that exist. Uh, we have cyber threats in email, in text messages, in the systems we use, whether we are a user or a producer of software. So whereas in the old world, cybersecurity people were a cynical guard, Today, if you work in cybersecurity, you're a business enabler and your work is about enabling the company to conduct its business in a good way. It's to, it's to enable uh, customers and consumers to trust you, to build trust and thereby enable the business to grow. <clears throat> and whereas in the old world, you would keep people away and say it's dangerous and don't come close, in the modern world of cybersecurity, we run to the fire, not away from it. And we ask everybody to tell us and report what they see. Because when you see something, you should say something. And with all the eyes on a problem, we can act, learn much faster, act much faster. So what we must do in this industry broadly, not just this company, HackerOne, not just Bitward, and every company in the whole world, we have to to make security work, we have to democratize it. We have to make it a level playing field where anybody can contribute, anybody can learn, anybody is welcome to join and, and contribute in their own little way. Just as we've seen in open source software, how when you have a community and you allow, allow anybody to join, they can work together and be very productive and constructive together, even when they disagree with each other which is a key uh, wisdom of open source communities. They are built for people who disagree, but they still work towards a, a goal, a common goal. And we need the same thinking and the same paradigm in security today. So we need to learn from open source, learn how to collaborate, learn how to get people who vehemently dis disagree to work together, learn to be open about problems, learn to do blameless uh, root cause analysis and look for the problems, but not blame them on individual people but just look for them for the problems so that they can be fixed. And in society, we must legislate cyber hygiene. It will work only when society passes laws that make sure that every organization, every company protects the data that they have been trusted to store for consumers, for other companies, for society. So therefore, the old software we have, which wasn't built with security in mind, we need to fix it or we need to throw it away. We can't just sit there thinking that we have old software that's unfixable and therefore there's some sort of excuse for not keeping it secure. That's not acceptable. Uh, we must face the reality and if we have old software that's th that doesn't work, we must deprecate it or we upgrade it and, and build, build new functionality. And we shouldn't call it 
software engineering in when we are studying it or anywhere else unless it contains sec a security aspect as well. Today, you can study computer science at many universities without taking a single course in cybersecurity. That's just plain wrong. It is so bad. It, it, we are teaching people how to build software without teaching them how to make sure it is safe and secure. And if our software isn't safe and secure, then people won't trust it. When they don't trust software, it soon means they don't trust society because society is running on software today. If we were still living in the pre-software world and software hadn't eaten the whole world, no big deal. Like it was in the early days of the internet, for instance. In the 90s, what we did on the internet was just fun stuff that sort of didn't affect the real world. But today, everything, everything of essence is running on software. All your personal data, your health, your society, your voting, your business, your climate uh, of change programs, whatever relates to, to climate, any law enforcement, any rules, any bookkeeping, accounting, anything that matters today runs on software. And therefore, we must make sure that software is strong and secure from the moment it is being designed. And to make that possible, we need to make sure that those who study software engineering learn to build safe software from the start. This we could learn from, avia from the aviation industry, where you have fantastic engineers designing airplanes or rockets or, or whatever, and they know that in order to even test fly uh, a rocket or, a, or an aircraft, it has to be designed and planned with safety in mind so that they can be sure to to be able to fly it. We should have the same principle in software, that from the moment we design it, we make sure that it's safe and secure enough for any consumer to trust, because otherwise uh, trust will erode with really negative uh, implications in society. And when I hear talk about software, I mean the broader concept of digital stuff. It could be software, it can be data, it can be your data, it can be anonymized data. It sort of doesn't matter what it is. Anything that's in a digital form needs to be built with security in mind. Or otherwise, we shouldn't have it. We just shouldn't have it. We built a, an internet now that's sort of a, a pretty prototype of what it should be, but it doesn't live up to the standards of security that we need to follow. So in the future, to get this digital trust in society, to have everybody feel that society functions on the digital side, which it now has to do, we're given COVID and the pandemic, uh, we have no other choice but to operate the entire society in a digital way. And to make sure we maintain trust there, like we used to have in the physical world, we need to, to realize that we must make it an open a level playing field where anybody can contribute. And that means that ignoring hackers will be viewed as negligence. And hackers here is a broad term. It means anybody on the outside who has an observation or an opinion on the, the, the state of your software and not listening to the input from the outside is negligent. So that's principle number one. Number two, security uh, must be collaborative. There's just one way to deal with asymmetric threats, and that is pooled defense. Those who are defending need to share their best practices, work together, uh, blamelessly uh, analyze what went wrong so they can be fixed for the next time. And when you do that, the good side and the defenders will always win because there's a thousand times more good people than bad people in any society, order of magnitude. And finally, to really build trust digitally, transparency is needed. It is the only way to fully achieve trust, to be open about one's intentions, open about the weaknesses, open about how they're being fixed, open about decision-making. The more transparent an organization can be, the more it can be trusted by anybody. Transparency doesn't mean sharing every secret. Transparency doesn't mean subjecting oneself to somebody else's decision making. Not at all. It just means a level of integrity about declaring what's going on and declaring how one is dealing with issues. That sort of transparency breeds trust, even with those who may disagree with you, even with those who would have done it a different way. But it's the, the strength to be transparent that builds trust in the world. 
So in, in summary, and as I said, I think many times here during the past minutes that there's just one way to do security and it is together. We need to plan together, design together, look for problems together, fix things together, share best practices together. That's how we build a digital <coughs> civilization, a digital society that can truly work and where, that people can trust. And I'm very happy that we're working with uh, Bitwarden on this very particular topic, looking for problems, fixing them. Because at HackerOne, we always say that bad news, that's good news, because you can fix it. Good news is no news, because it, news should be good. And no news, that's really bad news. Meaning when you don't know what's going on, that's really dangerous. <laughs>